Hi guys, welcome to another chemical engineering tutorial brought to you by the Chem Eng student. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at a complete guide to the Arrhenius equation. Now, this is the first video in our April competition, whereby you can win a thousand pounds every month for an entire year. So be sure to check out the question at the end of this video. So the first thing that we want to discuss is what the Arrhenius equation actually tells us. And in simple terms, the Arrhenius equation provides us with a relationship between the reaction rate with respect to the temperature. And we can express the Arrhenius equation as follows. So we have K equals A, E to the power minus E over RT. Now, the nomenclature is pretty much consistent with what you would have done in mass and energy balances in uh, reactor design and so forth. But we can see here that K is our rate constant, so that's what you would be uh, more familiar with in, say, reactor design. A is your frequency factor. E is your activation energy. R is the universal gas constant. And T is, of course, your temperature. Now, I've included the term K0 because sometimes instead of having A, i.e. your frequency factor, sometimes it can be denoted as the pre-exponential factor. So these are just some of the considerations um, if you see a different uh, way of writing the Arrhenius equation. But in general, your activation energy and your frequency factor, these can be found experimentally. Likewise, the value of K can be found experimentally as well. Now, the question is, how does this actually apply to, say, reactor design or a kinetic study? Well, the best way of doing this is basically to express the Arrhenius equation in a different form. Because as it stands, that is a exponential graph. If you were to plot that, it would have exponential behavior. Now that in terms of a relationship between variables is very, very difficult to predict. So what we can do is we can actually linearize the Arrhenius equation. And the way that we do that is basically just applying the standard laws of logs. So what we can do is take logs of both sides. So we'll take ln of k is equal to ln of the entire right hand side. Now the laws of logs tell us that when we have two terms that multiply together, we can break them in half and give them their own independent log. So that's what we'll do. Now that then allows us to cancel out this log and this exponential. And that's how you basically go about linearizing the equation. Because now we have ln of k equals ln of a minus e over rt. So what we've now created is a linear equation in the form y equals mx plus c, which is incredibly valuable for us because what we can now do is make a plot of the rate of the reaction with respect to time. But in order to do that, we need to just express this in a slightly different form. And the way that we do that is we isolate so we're keeping the ln of a and the ln of k. But these are exactly the same things. But what I'm doing is we're isolating the x-axis term from the other variables. So I've just expressed it as e minus e over r multiplied by 1 over t. Because now that is in the complete form y equals mx plus c. Because you have y, which is your ln k. Your m, which is your gradient, is minus e over r. Your x-coordinate is the 1 over t. And your y-intercept is ln of a. So these parameters can now be found through a simple plot of the logarithmic of the rate constant versus 1 over, or basically the reciprocal, of temperature. Now, this will then allow us to deduce the key properties directly from the graph. Now, if we consider this is just for a first order uh, reaction system, then if we were to actually plot this uh, equation, what we'd end up with is something like this. 
So we have our 1 over t versus our ln of k. Now you can see this is s to the minus 1, which tells us this is a first order system. Now your intercept, when we plot this, we can work out what our y-intercept is. So therefore, we can work out the value of the frequency factor, because we would just make that equal to the y-intercept, take exponentials, and that will give you a. Likewise, we can have the slope, whatever that value is, we can make that equal to the minus e over r, and that will give us, of course, the value of um, the activation energy. Now, one key consideration here that you must ensure is that your temperature is in Kelvin. So it must be in standard SI units. You can't have your temperature in, say, degrees Celsius, Fahrenheit, Rankin, um, or so forth. You need to ensure that your temperature has been converted to Kelvin. Now, there is some limitations or some assumptions that you have to make in order for this system to work. And the first one being you assume an elementary reaction followed by power law kinetics. And we'll look at what this actually means um, in an example that we'll do at the end. But if you have systems that do not follow these um, conditions, then you have to use a slightly different kinetic model. Now, another form that you can express the Arrhenius equation, and this is very powerful if your information is limited, and it's in the form of a ratio. So say, for example, you are provided two different reaction rates at different operating temperatures for the same reaction, right? So you have a different temperature with a recorded reaction rate, and you wanted to work out what the respective activation energy is then you could use this form in order to work out E. And the beauty of this is you don't need to know the frequency factor. Because of the way that this is derived, you don't need to include the ln of A because they actually cancel each other out during the mathematical proof. So this is very, very powerful if you want to, say, work out either the activation energy or an unknown temperature or an unknown rate without the need to have the frequency factor. And just as a side note, because some universities um, like to go into the proofs and like to give you some further background, but the Arrhenius equation can also be expressed using what was called the Van Hoff expression. And that's this equation here. Now, this is indeed out with the scope of this particular tutorial, but it provides us with information relative to the enthalpy of the reaction with a respect to um, the rate constant. Still a function of temperature, but the full derivation, we won't, um, we won't do that here. But just so that you're made aware that these are um, interchangeable and can be expressed in a similar format. Now, when we look at the kinetics analysis of the Arrhenius equation, you're probably most familiar with it in terms of mass and energy balances or reactor design. Now, we'll take a look. This is just a purely fundamental example of how the Arrhenius equation can be integrated to, say, a reactor design question. So say, for example, we have the overall second order reaction which takes place in an isothermal batch reactor. We want to derive the material balance with reference to the Arrhenius equation. So in order to do this, we need to apply the general mass balance. So that would be your accumulation is equal to N minus out, plus or minus the generation, plus or minus transfer. Now we're a batch reactor, so we can do some simplifications. We can get rid of the in and out flows because we don't have any of them. And we can also get rid of the transfer because we're isothermal, which means we have no heat transfer, but we're also assuming we have no mass transfer taking place. So this balance becomes the accumulation is equal to the generation, i.e. the amount of mass that accumulates is equal to the amount of C that has been generated because we have to 
keep the conservation of mass within the closed vessel. Now from here, what we can then do is we can start to express it in the proper nomenclature. We can express the accumulation as the change in the concentration of A, so we're using component A as a reference, so we have dCA over dT, because that is with respect to time. Because in batch systems, the thing that you really are interested in is the batch time. And the generation is equal to the reaction rate, so that's the minus Ra, multiplied by the volume of the vessel. Now, if you aren't 100% sure as to how we got to this point, then we have quite a few example videos and tutorials on our channel, which I'll put a link in the description to them, on mass and energy balances and reactor design. Alternatively, if you want even more details, um, you can check out one of our courses, um, free and paid, on our website. I'll put a link in the description to them, and if you're interested, you can have a look at some of that content as well. But we're going to turn our attention here to the minus R A, because that's basically the reaction rate of the consumption of A. And because we are first order, then we can express this as KCA. Now the reason it's first order is because we come back to one of the assumptions. The assumption was we follow power law kinetics. So that means whatever the stoichiometric coefficient is of A is the order. So because there is a one here, we are first order the overall reaction would be second order. But because we're using component A, the reaction rate with respect to A is first order. So we have KCA. Now we aren't asked to solve anything, we just want to express the material balance as a function of the Arrhenius equation. So from here, all we have to do is replace K with the Arrhenius equation. In that, is how you would express your material balance for a batch reactor as a function of the Arrhenius equation. Granted, if this was a problem, you know, a numerical problem, you would normally at the side determine the value of K from the Arrhenius equation and substitute it back in. But that's the, that's the general principle um, and the mechanics behind the, the kinetics analysis. Now let's take a look at a full numerical working example. So we have experimental kinetic data um, for some reaction, and we are asked to reduce the activation energy and the frequency factor. Now we have a reaction rate with its respective operating temperatures. So we have two of these. Now what I can do is we'll express these as K1 and K2 along with their respective temperatures, T1 and T2. Now notice the temperatures have been converted from degrees Celsius to degrees Kelvin. And that's important because we have to have temperature in Kelvin in order for the Arrhenius equation to work. Now there is two ways that you can go about this. And the way that we're gonna do it is we're gonna exploit the ratio Arrhenius equation. But alternatively, what you can do is you can use the, you basically create two simultaneous equations, both of which are functions of the frequency factor. And then you could solve them simultaneously. So you would be able to deduce the value of E and the value of A. But here, to make life a bit easier, I'm going to use the ratio equation because we have the ratio between two rates and two corresponding temperatures. So if I substitute in the values, because I'll always be able to have the universal gas constant, then the only unknown here is E. That's our activation energy. So from here, you would just substitute in the values, number crunch into the calculator, and that'll tell you that the value of E is 1.6 times 10 to the power 5 joules per mole. Now from here, we can either deduce the frequency factor using either K1 and T1 or K2 and T2. And in this example, I'm gonna use K1 and T1, but all, you can also use K2 and T2 and check that you get the same answer. But I'm gonna now bring in the Arrhenius equation in its entirety, 
because I have all the information except the frequency factor A. So I'll pop the values in and I'll rearrange and I get a value of A to be 4.73 times 10 to the power 10. Now the unit here of M is just a generic unit because you can work in, you know, it's dependent on what the units of your system are. But you always have to be in seconds because it's with respect to time. So it has to be with respect to, you know, per second or per hour basis. But that's essentially how you would apply the Arrhenius equation in a mathematical sense. Alternatively, you can make plots and read off the value of E and A from the graphical plot as well. So now it's time um, for you to win a thousand pounds every month for an entire year. And all you have to do to enter is answer the following question correctly. What is the minimum energy requirements of a reaction more commonly referred to? So in order to enter, just simply comment your answer to this video, like and subscribe to the channel, and make sure that you're subscribed to the Facebook page because that's where we will announce the winner on the 5th of next month. Entries end on the 30th of this month, so be sure to put your answers in before the deadline in order to be entered. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful in understanding the concept and the idea of the Arrhenius equation. If you liked this video, please consider liking and subscri subscribing to the channel. It really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. Thank you for your time and we hope to see you in another video.